And so here we are, uh, another update on the game I'm making. Uh, this will be a lot of the stuff that I went over in the uh, last development video, but I'll try to make this one quicker. And uh, I've added a few new things um, since then. So just to go right to the list, get started, um, some of the main changes are the uh, ground textures and the mountain textures before they were just flat colored. Um, there was a really basic texture on the ground. And uh, the way that enemies are stunned is different now. That's uh, done with script instead of physics volumes. And it works a lot better. There's a lot of bugs um, that would cause, cause the enemies to clip through the ground and disappear with the way I had it before. And this way just works uh, a lot more flawlessly. I've increased the jump height, uh, the run speed, decreased the stamina drain, and increased the speed at which you crouch and stand up. Um, one of the more uh, obvious differences in the game mechanics is the uh, pickup and drop mechanics. I'll just start up the game here and demonstrate it. Um, before, you would just pick up the item and uh, if you dropped it, it would land in the exact same spot. And now it's randomized a little bit. And I also changed the uh, pick up to a line trace instead of a uh, capsule collision, which is the proper way to do it anyway. So now if I drop these branches out of my inventory, they're going to land in a random spot ahead of me, so they won't all clip together. Those two are pretty close, they just happen to randomly uh, choose a really close point. But there's a, basically a box by my feet, and every time I drop it, it picks a point within that box. That works a lot better. Um, oh, and it also, uh, if I'm on a hill, the things will snap to the ground and they'll tilt to the exact angle of the ground. And then I also added a uh, right click move. You can grab something with right click and pick it up and drop it. So I could grab this and put it over on this table if I wanted to. And I think I missed it. There we go. And also, when you pick something up, you can rotate it by spinning the mouse wheel. And then just drop it wherever you want. Um, a lot of you probably know I've been doing a lot of uh, LOD and cull distance work on pretty much every model over the last couple weeks, and I got those pretty optimized um, for every every item. Um, the grass and the huts, all the pickup items, all the trees, um, all the aliens. There's a few, uh, a couple like floating mountains that are kind of trivial that uh, I haven't put LEDs on, but I might do that in the future, but I don't think it's going to affect frame rate at all. But now that everything else has LEDs, it's drastically increased the frame rate. Uh, the colors, uh, you can probably tell, have changed a lot. Uh, I've got a lot more green in here, and I've toned down the purples and pinks. I still, I still like the blue and the the pink uh, color palette, but I like that I've added a lot more green in there too, and I've drastically increased the brightness of everything too, and slightly uh, desaturated everything. Just gives it a little bit more of a realistic look. Uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, shadows. Uh, I've got the shadows optimized pretty well where they're moving really slowly, really smoothly. If you just look at that shadow, you can see that it's slowly moving. And it's uh, moving with every frame too. Before I had it set to like five frames a second. But now I've got it optimized where it can, it can update every, uh, every frame. 
and I'm still working a little bit on the uh, shadow edges. Trying to get them to look crisp up close and they'll fade as they get you know, fuzzier as they get farther away, which just helps optimize the shadows. Uh, but one of the biggest problems with that is uh, there's some shadow flutter at certain distances, like on this tree in the center. You can see that shadow's kind of flickering, but it's really subtle right now. I've pretty much fixed that, probably about 90%, and the rest is kind of trivial. But it's a little bit distracting every once in a while, like that tree. You can see the shadow fluttering on the bottom. But that's working really good. Uh, I've changed how the damage capsules work. I won't really get into it, but it uh, just works a lot better. There was issues where you hit an enemy with a brand new weapon and it would break, but that won't happen anymore. Um, and the arrows, I'm looking at a list on my lap if you wonder why I keep looking down. I'm going, um. um <laughs> the arrows uh, stick into the bird now every time which is a very good thing. Before they'd either just not stick in them, um, you can still get damage on a grazing hit, but if they hit them solid, they'll stick in them and then they, they'll they stay in his body, they won't hover in the air. Hit him in the head. Oh, in the nose, didn't kill him. There we go. All right, now. Arrows are somewhere. There's one right here. I think I see the other one, but here's another thing that I just added recently. If you can't find an arrow and you hit H, oh man, it's not working. It's supposed to uh, light up the arrow. Well, that's pretty funny because it's worked every other time. Of course, when I'm streaming, it doesn't work. See if these work. There we go. So those lit up. Now, let's see if I can find that other one. I'm gonna go make sure I didn't already pick it up. So I have 12 arrows here. Yeah, so there's one missing. <clears throat> That's pretty funny that it isn't showing up. Most likely it went through the ground, so I'll have to fix that. And yep, that one, it's either that or, nope, that one's working. I'm thinking when I, when I shot him, when he died, the arrow that was stuck in his body went through the ground, and I can't, I can't see it or click on it. But that's still a work in progress. We'll try to get that so it always works. I might have to change the position of the space chicken. There's one over here. Oh, there it is. So it did it did go through them. That's good. I thought I had it worked out where uh, the arrows would never clip through the ground when he dies. So it still seems like that. That arrow just went through them. So I might have to work out a little bit to get the arrows to always collide. And, you know, if they hit the mesh and not go through it. There we go. Got all 12 arrows back. But I probably would have never found that if I didn't have the... Uh, the ability to highlight the arrows like I do now, which is pretty cool. There we go, both arrows are stuck in them. All right, moving on. Uh, the trap, I fixed the trap. I'll go test that, it'll probably uh, not work. I'm streaming right now too, so I might be talking to people on the stream. Hey, geez, how's it going, man? Thanks. Alright, 
So I'll just make a trap. The uh, problem yesterday, or uh, the other day, when I made the last video, um, was when I tried to place the trap, if I was holding it too high in the air, it would just disappear because the line trace that it does to uh, find the ground and then determines, you know, what elevation to snap to and what tilt, uh, that line trace wasn't shooting down far enough. So if I held the trap up in the air, the line trace would go down, it would stop before it hit the ground, and it would just bug it out, and trap would cease to exist. <clears throat> So I think oh, we need to make two cords, and the tools only work if you have them equipped. There we go. So I can drop the trap and set it by clicking on the main base of it. And now if I want to move it, I can right click. Oh, you can't be holding the bow though, because uh, you hold right click to knock the bow, so you have to put your bow away. You can hold any other weapon, like a hammer. Well, I might change that, because I want to add a right click throwing of all male melee weapons. So then, to move stuff, oh my gosh, the first time I tried to move it, it didn't work. That's pretty funny. So then to move stuff, um, you'd have to uh, sheathe all your weapons. It either ended up in the tree, or it just disappeared. So I guess I haven't fixed that yet. I will mark that down. Not really sure what happened there, unless I just didn't save it. But I'll work on that and see how that goes next time. Uh, the torch and the fire uh, look a lot different now. And they cast shadows. The reason they didn't before is because it was really unoptimized, but I figured out a way to uh, get them to cast shadows and cast light really far. and not affect the frame rate, which it probably will now since I'm live streaming. There we go. Might be a little bright, but if you get stuff next to it, you can see that the uh, light from the fire is casting a dynamic shadow. A lot easier to tell when it's dark, but it's not going to be dark for about 20 minutes in the game. And the torch. There we go. The torch does the uh, same thing, casts dynamic shadows now. Uh, you can see on the pineapple there. Shadows casting all around it moves according to where the torch is held. And uh, again at night it's a lot easier to see. Uh, actually the uh, yeah the pineapple plant is not casting shadows because I had to set each individual item to allow shadows to be casted from the torch, because right now I can't have the grass cast shadows from the torch. That completely kills the frame rate. I'm not sure why. Um, the sunlight can cast shadows on the grass. You can see. You can see all the shadows on the grass right there. But if I pull the torch out, and I can't light it because I don't have a tinder bundle lit on me. There we go. Flip it. Crying loud. <laughs> if I uh, have a torch by the grass, it doesn't cast an extra shadow. But that's fine. Um, and the trees and the rocks don't cast the shadow either, or any of the other foliage. Just all the pickup items. Uh, the, the hut here does. You can see the shadow moving behind the stairs there. And the well. That fire is kind of screwing stuff up. There we go. See that shadow behind the bucket on the inside of the well. That's work in progress, though. A few other things need to get to add.
add shadows. Pretty much everything will uh, by the time I get to it, except the ground foliage. The, the green and pink grass type stuff. Just because I can't figure out how to optimize that yet. Uh, it's, it's optimized otherwise, it's just that the uh, torch shadows kill it. And uh, the day-night cycle. Um, that's pretty much the same as it's been. Um, I've just changed the colors and added fog. So it still all works the same. It you know slowly gets darker at night and uh, brighter at sunrise, as it should. But just the way that the colors work and the, the fog, um, it just looks a lot better. But I can't really uh, demonstrate that now unless I have to uh, maybe put a link into a uh, day-night cycle gameplay video. Uh, let's see. I added ambient occlusion. Uh, anti-aliasing and motion blur and it's all pretty subtle the biggest thing is the anti-aliasing it's actually uh, it does cause quite a bit of a performance hit um, on this computer it doesn't but on my laptop it's a lot more obvious so I'll definitely have to add options for either no anti-aliasing um, FXAA or uh, temporal AA which is what I'm using right now the temporal AA uh, lowers the shadow flicker the most. You can really see it on those trees right there. As the sun moves, the shadows don't flicker at all if the sun's not moving, but something about the uh, dynamic shadow uh, resolution change at distance. Um, the engine has a hard time keeping those static. If you use uh, distant field shadows, they don't stutter like that, but that's a whole different type of shadow system that I'm still uh, still learning about. Um, but I can't get it to work quite right, but maybe someday I will add that in, and that will help the uh, distant shadow flicker. Um, let's see, I can harvest rock shards. These little guys. Those are for making arrows and the knives and some other things. And if you walk up to any rock and hit it with a hammer, you bust off a little piece like that. And the same goes for uh, the wood. You get the hatchet out. Uh, that's not a tree, though. you got to find an actual tree. That's basically a big weed. Here's a tree. Hit that, and a branch pops out. If you're looking down, hit a root, you can see it happen. I might add physics on that, but... Right now it just appears when you hit any part of a regular tree, and if you stand in one spot it'll spawn them in a little bit different point. You can see that it's spawning. It doesn't just stack them all exactly on top of each other. It could spread that out a little bit, but it's working. And I packaged the game for the first time about a, about a week ago I did that. Um, it took me a Took me a good 12 hours or so to work all the bugs out just to get it to a uh, package right, but that is the uh, final exported version that you know would be the uh, shipping version that you guys would play if you want to. But I finally got that uh, that working right, finding new bugs with new additions to the game. But I think I got it down, uh, figuring out the best way to get that to work. Um, but yeah, I've tested it on this computer and it works really good, and on my laptop it works decent if I uh, turn down some of the graphics options, but my laptop's getting pretty old, it's like five years old now, and it just has a, it's not the best graphics card, but, but we'll get it, we'll get it optimized to work on all types of different systems, and... I guess the last thing on the list is uh, the jumping puzzle. I've changed that a little bit, um, but I'll save that for a gameplay video, which I'll probably make next. So that is uh, that's it right now for more uh, succinct update video. This one was only 20 minutes. The last one was like an hour, so <laughs> hopefully that's a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna stop the stream here just to uh, break up the archive and I'll uh, do a little more in-depth playtest.
and run around the map a little bit and uh, probably play through a couple day night cycles all right see you guys later